<clears throat> Hello, my name is Rafael Lira and we are from Team 4 and we are helping Con Edison to answer this question. Should Con Edison issue a Yolko? So they are evaluating the possibility of, of moving to this new label. Who is Con Edison? Con Edison is, is one of the largest US utility with more than 500 megawatts of contracted assets under this uh, small company called CEB. And this accounts more or less for 2% of the bid that was of Con Edison today. So Con Edison is evaluating of moving these assets to its new model called Yolko. Yolko is more or less a new vehicle to issue uh, a, a public offering for these assets in order to get to get uh, uh, new cash flows for, for the company. Other companies like San Edison and Next Era have gone through this with uh, diverse results. So we're talking now about the anal analysis we're doing in order to analyze this situation for Con Edison. So we believe that it is important to understand the current situations of the yield co global market. And this is why we first show uh, how the Global Yield Co Index has performed um, between 2013 and like to, to the present. And we see that even though at first there seemed to be a boom, now um, the performance of Yield Co's has been very bad in the, in, in the last time. Uh, this may be due to different issues such as uh, interest rates. Uh, we know now that the Fed is planning to raise interest rates and this has become more of an issue now than in, back in 2013 and since bonds are um, the um, competition of these yield calls, there could be like a uh, change in investors between them and, and these kind of assets and also there may be an important part due to uh, oil prices which make the yield calls less sustainable and also a higher demand for renewable energies, which will also make uh, the develop of these kind of projects more expensive. Okay, now so we also analyzed the, the past experience of, of similar companies and how they, they performed after the, the, the Yilco was issued. So in the left part of this uh, slide, we can see the evolution of Nextera and these this are the betas of the parent company and the Yilco. So in the case of Nextera, we can see that the blue line is the parent company. And when they issue the, the Yilco, the beta of the, comp the parent company was higher than the beta of the Yilco. This makes sense, or in our understanding, makes sense because uh, those assets are, are safer and promises to, to give back to investors a, a, a more or less a stable yield or dividend. But in the past few months, uh, we, we've seen that the, the beta has risen and now it's uh, much more, much higher than the, the beta of the parent company. Uh, we can see that the, the, the beta today is about 1.5 and the parent company is stabilized between 0 0.7 and 0.8. A different story is the one that San Edison faced. Uh, since they issued the Gilco until today, the, the beta of the Gilco is, has maintained as lower than the, the beta of the parent company. But we have to understand that there's a difference in, in the reality. San Edison is a company that is focused mainly on the development of renewable energy. And the beta of the parent company is it's around 2.5. And we can see that the beta of the Gilco is around 1.5. So we can see that the Gilcos have a converge into this uh, level of, of risk. Uh, finally, we, we've analyzed that the the difference, uh, statistically speaking, uh, of having or not having the, the Yilco in this analysis is, uh, is not significant. So we can say that uh, in San Edison case, the, we believe that this hasn't created value even though we're seeing a, a lower beta. Uh, 